20 to 30 minutes will break out. Some, if you would like, we invite you to be a part of our outreach ministry. There'll be a group going out to prayer walk our neighborhood each Sunday afternoon during that time. It'll also be a time for our disciple pairs to meet. Now, if you're with us in our disciple training this spring, I encourage you, if you haven't finished up that first pairing, continue on, finish up, look for a new partner. And it'll be a time you might say, you know what, uh, I want to be a part of our one-on-one discipleship ministry, but I don't have another night of the week. So that's okay. You come and just use the church during that time and, and uh, use a slot that you already have in your week. A couple times in the fall, we'll do some door-to-door. Scott Wilson's going to come and lead us and train those who are, are wanting to go out door-to-door. Is door-to-door the very best way to get the gospel to our neighbors? Not sure, but it's certainly one way. And uh, so we'll do that. The Power Pack ministry that uh, packs food on the, for the weekends for the Grant Middle School students who need it, that will be meeting during that hour a couple of times a month and some more. So and even if you say, you know what, all of that, I still, you haven't hit my nerve yet. You come for the opening rally, hear the testimonies, and stay in this room and pray for everything else that's going on. And that's an effective thing that you could do. So it's a time for all of us on Sunday evenings, base camp. Well, that's enough of, uh, of me. Well, actually, it's not because I'm about to preach, so it's enough of that part uh, of me. That's, don't amen. Uh, the, that's enough of me part. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for this, this morning, the rich worship we've been privileged to sing, these songs to you, these words, our attempt to say how wonderful, how glorious you are. Lord, what a privilege it is for us to be here And we're here today so that we might be strengthened in your word, so that we might go out to the lost in Albuquerque and around the world. Lord, we pray that you'd do a work so great in Albuquerque that only you'd get the credit, that you would claim Albuquerque for your own, that you'd send spiritual awakening to the city and revival to the churches. Lord, today as we pray for a sister church, I pray for Alameda Baptist Church, and just pray that you would... Do a great work there today. Equip them, encourage them, provide for them, and use them to reach the lost in this city. And Father, I pray as we turn to your word now that you'd speak so clearly, so powerfully to my life, to our lives. Take your rich word and make it alive today. And help us to be people who respond. Help us to listen today, not as listening to a presentation or a homily or a lecture, but listening to the word of God to ask, what would God have me do today? in response to his word. Oh, Holy Spirit, please fall on this place. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your copy of God's word and turn to the book of Jonah as we continue studying through the book of Jonah. And we're in Jonah chapter 2 today. Jonah chapter 2. As you're turning to Jonah chapter 2, just a recap. For those of you who may not be familiar with the story, God has spoken to Jonah, his prophet, and said, I want you to go to Nineveh. The, the wickedness from Nineveh, uh, the, the smell of it, if you will, has risen up to me. And I don't like it. It's not right. And I want them to repent. So you go to Nineveh and you tell them of me. You tell them to repent. And Jonah says, I don't want to go to Nineveh because I don't want them to have the mercy of God. I don't want them to know about God because I don't like Nineveh because of what they're doing to my own nation. And so Jonah goes the opposite direction, buys a ticket to get as far away as he can, headed to Tarshish on a ship. God sends a storm against the ship. The sailors wake Jonah up, who's asleep at the bottom of the ship, trying to maybe drown out God's voice. And they say, what's going on? And Jonah says, it's my fault. I'm a a believer in the true God, and uh, if you'll throw me over, this will stop. The, The sailors tried to not throw him over. They showed more mercy to Jonah than Jonah showed to Nineveh. But finally, the sailors who were hardened sailors got so scared of this storm because it was like no other that they threw Jonah overboard. And the moment his body touched the water, the water went placid. And that's where we picked Jonah up here today in Jonah chapter 2. We were also elated a month or so ago when those, that soccer team in Thailand was rescued from the cave, those 12 boys and their coach who'd gotten trapped deep, deep, deep in the cave by the rising floodwaters, and we were so elated that they were rescued and brought out of what must have been a very harrowing, fearful experience to be trapped down deep in the cave. But today we look at a man whose situation was worse than those young men's, as bad as theirs was, 
No one knew where he was, sinking in the middle of the ocean. Only God knew about Jonah. And so let's read Jonah's prayer. It's an interesting prayer here. It's a prayer within a prayer as Jonah is praying and remembering what he prayed in the sinking in the waters as he's praying in the belly of the well. If you're confused, you're paying perfect attention. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the stomach of the fish. Real fish, not told what kind it is, swallowed Jonah. Jesus said so in Matthew. And he said, I called out of my distress to the Lord, and he answered me. I cried for help from the depth of Sheol. You heard my voice, for you had cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the current engulfed me, and your breakers and billows passed over me. So I said, I have been expelled from your sight. Nevertheless, I will look again towards your holy temple. Water encompassed me to the point of death. The great deep engulfed me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I descended to the roots of the mountains. The earth with its bars was around me forever. But you have brought me up. You have brought up my life from the pit, O Lord, my God. While I was fainting away, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Those who regard vain idols forsake their faithfulness, but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. That which I have vowed I will pay. Salvation is from the Lord. And then the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah up onto the dry land. It's the only time a guy gets to say vomit in church. I I just, that's that's one of my favorite uh, parts of that story. So young men, Uh, aspire to the office of preacher, and you can say vomit too in church and not get spanked for it. Well, I want us to look at a few things here. I want us to see first, again, the effects of our sin. We've been seeing the effects mounting uh, in Jonah's life. As Jonah said, no, I have a better idea like you do, like I do. I know God has said this, but I, I, I know better than God this time, and it'll just be worth it to run from God. I'm going to go another way. And so God has his man, and he's zeroing in on him, and he, in this chapter, he has got him. He's got Jonah exactly where he wants him. And he's thrown into the sea, and and what a picture this is. We don't, Jonah's not exactly giving us exactly the the blow-by-blow of exactly how this happened, but nevertheless, Jonah was sinking to the bottom. And I've never sunk to the bottom of water like this. Most of you have never sunk like this, fearful of drowning, some have, but you've all sunk like this, sometimes our own fault and sometimes for other purposes that God has for us. But here he is. He says, I called out of my distress to the Lord. He answered me, for you cast me into the deep. God did it. The sailor's hands threw him in, but it was God who did it. And in Jonah's case, it was because he was running from God. Now, God wasn't forsaking Jonah. Jonah thought he was, but he wasn't. If he was, he'd have just let him drown. But God, in Jonah's case, had to push him and push him and push him until he broke him to the very depth of his being. And sometimes in our sin, we're all sinners. We've all turned from the Lord. None of us is going to heaven because of how good we are or how good we ever will be. We're all sinners, the Scripture says. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So all of us are sinners, but some of us, especially believers, because we won't turn back, because God woos us. The Scripture says His kindness leads us to repentance. God woos us. He speaks to us. He entreats us. He says, come back. I've paid for your sin on the cross. I not only paid for the price of your sin, but I paid for the power of sin to break it in your life. But sometimes we resist God to the point that God has to say, I have to break this one. I have to break them so hard that they'll never go back. And you could give testimony to that. God sometimes says, I've got to go to the extreme because I love this one so much. I will not let them go, and I'll break them. 
so they'll actually turn from their sin. Don't wait till God has to cast you into the depths of the sea. Listen to him. Repent today. We, we know it. Logically, we know it. We know when we turn from the Lord. We know where it's going to end. We know the end of the story, and yet still, the power of the temptation of the devil, the power of what's wicked in our own flesh, the power of the, what's around us, still, we sometimes turn in the face of all that we know and say, I think I'll go my own way. Today, turn back so that God doesn't have to throw you into a violent sea as he did to Jonah. I mean, here's Jonah. Think where he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be on dry land in Nineveh. And just a few verses ago, he's asleep at the bottom, not wanting anything to do with God. But now throw him into the depths of the sea, and things have changed for Jonah, like they changed for me, like they changed for you. You know, perhaps you've never drowned. But you've been into the pit that Jonah speaks of here. He says, God, you rescued me from the pit, which means Jonah went into the pit. I mean, the description here is pretty amazing. Whatever you've been through is the worst thing you've ever been through. You know, sometimes we think, well, I, you know, I, I've never been through what they've been through. But whatever the worst thing ever you've been, the worst thing you've ever been through, that's the worst thing you've ever been through. That's pretty, de- pretty deep, isn't it? I mean, you know, stick, stick, <laughs> stick with me, you'll learn amazing truths. <laughs> but it is. And some of those pits were our fault, like Jonah's. And the answer for that's easy. You just repent. When we were in Japan, especially when we first got there, the traffic would be bad, as it always is. And being a good uh, Texas guy, I think... I find a shortcut around this traffic. And so I'd go off into the neighborhood. Well, those neighborhoods in Osaka had been built hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And the road would get a little bit more narrow. A little bit more narrow. A little bit more narrow. Until finally, on a two lane residential street, my mirrors were touching the flower pots hanging on the walls on both sides. It's at that point that you think, I really wish I'd have turned around about a quarter of a mile ago, but I've gone so far in, and there's no choice. It's still going to be difficult, but I've got to get out of here. And in some of your cases today, I'm not trying to tell you that there's no regret. I'm not trying to tell you that there'll be no pain involved in it, but why go into further pain? Why keep pushing forward into what God's already letting you be thrown into the sea for? Repent. And you'll be glad. He who conceals his sin, Proverbs 28 says, will not prosper. But he who confesses and forsakes it will find compassion. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's some pain in that. I don't want to paint too pretty of a picture for you here. But you'll still be glad when you find the compassion of the Lord on the other side, even though you wish you had never gotten into that situation. So some of you are in that pit today, and you need to repent. But some of you today, I mean, I've spoken to a lot of you, and I know a lot of your stories today. You're in some pits that are not because of your sin. Well, that's not what this text is about, but there's still a truth here for you as well. You're in a pit that's like nothing you've ever been in before, and today you desperately want out. Let's stick with the story. Scripture says, when I was silent in King David's sinful prayer, when I was silent about my sin, my body wasted away. And some of you are there today. Scripture says the wicked flee when no one pursues, totally lacking peace because of your sin. And as I look at my story, I can see this in my life. There have been times where I was the wicked fleeing when no one was pursuing. So what's God's purpose here? To destroy Jonah? No. To bring him back. that's, That's our God. If you're here today and God's speaking to you about being a Jonah, He's doing it because He loves you. He's doing it because He wants you to deal with it, because He paid for it on the, on the cross, because He wants to draw you back. He wants you like this. We sang about that. There's nothing like your embrace. That's what He wants for you. But you've got to surrender to Him for Him to give it to you. And like the prodigal son, sometimes He has to allow the circumstances in our life to get so bad that we're drowning in the sea so that we'll turn back 
and so that we'll repent. These are the effects of our sin. But He knows our hearts, and He loves us. So whether you're in the depths of a pit today and it's your own fault, or whether you're in the depths of a pit today and you say, I, as best I can tell, even though I know I'm a sinner, this is just something God's bringing in my life. Turn to God today, as Jonah did. And that's the next thing. Looking at true repentant prayer, which is the same type of prayer from the depths that we need to pray to God. He says in verse 4, so I have been expelled from your sight. That's the feeling he had. That's the feeling some of you have today, that you've been expelled from his sight because of what you've done up until this point, although God entreats you to deal with that today and to turn. Or you say, I feel expelled from God's sight today, and I don't know that it was anything I did, but I sure feel expelled from God's sight today. What I'm going through right now is, is the worst thing I've ever gone through. And so in the second half of the verse, he says, Nevertheless, I will look again toward your holy temple. Water encompassed me to the point of death. I don't believe that Jonah actually died here. Some do. It doesn't matter. I don't think he died, but I, thought, I think he thought he was going to die. Because 99.9% .9 of the time that someone throws you into the middle of the Mediterranean, you die. Jonah's the only one I've ever heard of that didn't. So yes, he thought he was going to die. The great deep engulfed me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. Someone suggested maybe God put the weeds around his head so he'd smell like good fish food. We don't know. We don't know. But God said for the fish to swallow him up, but that was a blessing. I descended to the roots of the mountains. That's deep. The earth and its bars was around me forever. But you have brought my life from the pit, O Lord, my God. While I was fainting away, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Those who regard vain idols forsake their faithfulness. Jonah is admitting, I've been idolatrous. And the idol for Jonah, many different words for it, but the biggest word for it was Jonah. And that's the idol for me sometimes. What I really want is just what I want. And sometimes I'm my own worst idol. I'm really good at taking care of myself. I mean, you know, give me the, the resources and I can take really good care of myself. And sometimes I'm not willing for God to come in and to give me direction for what He knows is best for His kingdom and for me. So I'm, I'm turning God. I'm forsaking the idols in my life. And He says, but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. What did God need from Jonah? Did He need Jonah to be religious? Did He need Jonah to be good? Did He need Jonah to give wealth? No, he wanted Jonah's heart to turn to him like he wants your heart to turn to him. And some here in this room today, you'd say, you know, I really don't know Christ as my Savior. I, I, I believe there's a God. That's, that's kind of why I'm here. But I don't know him. I don't know that if I died tonight, I'd spend eternity with God in heaven. I hope I would because I've been pretty good. But today would be the day for you to admit to what the Scripture says that you can't be good enough. If you could be good enough to go to heaven, then it would be a waste for Jesus to come and die on the cross. But He came and died on the cross because you and your spiritual situation are sinking to the bottom. And God's got you there so you'd be like Jonah and look up. Look up. In His case, He says to the temple. But for us, it's looking up to the Spirit of God that loves you so much that He died on the cross for you. Jonah says, I, I'm, and with my mouth, I'm expressing what's in my heart. That's how we come to Christ. I mean, we lead people in what we call the sinner's prayer. But it's not the prayer that saves you. It's the heart. We're expressing it with the voice so we can nail it down, so we can know, hey, on this date, I know that my heart said, yes, I believe I'm a sinner, and that I believe that Jesus paid for my sin on the cross. And I'm voicing that with these words. We see that in, in, uh, in Romans. We're told to confess with our mouth. And so our mouth like Jonah's, with the voice of thanksgiving. That which I vowed I will pay. And Jonah's saying, when you, if you, he doesn't know what's going to happen. It's only the end of the story. But God, if you'll get me out of this fish, I'll obey you. And so as, as coming to Christ, we're not going to obey Christ so that we'll go to heaven. But if we understand the depths of our sin from which he saved us, then the only logical response is then to turn our life by his grace, growing day by day, to follow the Lord in His ways. True repentant prayer is recognizing these truths and turning to the Lord. And are you willing, or does He have to keep making you go? He's saying, "Well, I don't sin, a sickness, a loss, 
And again, all of us have had these pits. And yours isn't as worse as someone else's, but at the time it feels as bad as it's ever going to feel because it's the worst thing you've ever been through. And there's sometimes in those pits that the pit becomes a sanctuary where you learn more about God than you could ever could have learned any other way. to go through this. God's grace and his, his power, his mercy deeper still. You know why? Because Jesus went to the pit. I deserve my pits. There's nothing I've gone through that, that if I really were to, to look at it and say, you know what, God really, God outed me there. He, he owes me one. No, he owes me some things like my parents in heaven still owe me spankings. No, God doesn't owe me anything. My pits are my fault, usually. But there are things that God sends me through, and, and at the very depths of it, I can be comforted to know that Jesus, who was God, who deserved nothing except for the glories of heaven, left the glories of heaven so that he could go, as Jesus even compared his own three days in the grave to Jonah's three days in the belly of the fish, that Jesus did that for me and for you. We don't like those things. I hate those things. Can I just say, I don't like the pits in my life. I don't like when things are, 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 are dark or difficult or I feel despair. But I learn more about God there sometimes than I do when days are fair and glorious. I don't invite them for sure, and I hate them in your life. But God's love is deeper than your pit. And so in the same way, I entreat you to keep crying out to God. Uh, read the Psalms over and over and over. The psalmist says, I cried and you heard. I cried and you heard. In the Scripture, Jesus and God entreats us, cry to me, call to me. For my yoke is easy even in those pits. And he doesn't mean there that it's just simple to go through what you're going through. But it just means that even there you can cry to me, call to me, and his spirit will minister to you. That the joy of the Lord would become your strength in that deep moment, that dark moment in your life. Look to the Lord as Jonah looked to the Lord. But then the last thing here is to see just the grace of the Lord, his miraculous answer. And it's just given to us in one verse. Then the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah up onto dry land. That fish for three days had been saying to the other fish, guys, there's something. I ate something that's really giving me trouble. <laughs> and finally, the Lord allows him. The Lord says, okay, vomit him up. I mean, I've always wondered, you know, was there anybody around? Can you just imagine? I just love these pictures. Can you imagine you're just walking along and there he goes, Pshaw! you know, <laughs> there goes Jonah. And nobody believed you is the problem. But God said, all right, Jonah, I've saved you. And God wants to save you today from whatever pit you're in, whether it's your fault or not. Isaiah 26, 12. I love this. Lord, you will establish peace for us, for you have also performed for us all our works. The biggest problem you ever had or ever will have is your sin and the payment necessary for your sin. But God in his mercy left the glories of heaven and paid for your sin, for my sin on the cross. So, so this, this verse saying, if he would pay for your biggest need, if he would solve the biggest crisis you've ever had in your life, what are you going to do about your sin? Because you can't stand before God and say, I'm a pretty good person. I was a member of Sandia Baptist or my grandma was a Christian. That the only thing that you could stand before God satisfactorily and say is I believed in Jesus and became a follower of Jesus Christ who paid for my sin. So if he'd pay for the biggest needs you ever, ever, ever had, doesn't he know about the others? Doesn't he know about the pit that you're in today? And I just would say to you in just a moment, I'm going to invite us to just, whether it's out loud or in your heart, wherever you're at today, and hey, some of you are having the best day of your life, praise the Lord. But that you just in your voice, you're in the deep, not because of your sin, though you can't see him, turn to him. Just as Jonah said, nevertheless, I will look to your temple. No pit so deep that his mercy is not deeper still. Sometimes he has to break us. I invite you to repent. Sometimes it's not because of our sin. I invite you to call out to him today. 
he's the rescuer that you've been looking for. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this, this word from Jonah to me. Lord, sometimes I go against you. Sometimes I don't go to bad things. I just go my own way. And I depend on my strength. And Lord, it's, it's not fun to thank you for sometimes letting me get to the end of myself. But it's there that I quit trusting in me and trust in you again. Lord, in this room full of people, there are so many different situations. But you're the answer for all of them. Lord, for those who today would say, I really don't know that I've ever come to know Christ as my Savior. That today they'd understand that you, in your mercy, open your arms of love to say, come, repent, receive forgiveness of sin and eternal life. Oh, God, I pray that there'd be those who turn to you for the first time today. And then, God, in the myriad of situations where we need to turn back to you in small ways or big, that we would have the humility and the grace to turn back to you today. And then, Lord, those today who are just hurting and don't know why, that today they could turn to the one that the psalmist said redeems our life from the pit, and that you would breathe mercy and strength for one more hour, one more day, as we continue to lean on, cling to you. Oh, Holy Spirit of God, move. Let us be responders today.